All right, so this is the finalized prototype of the Excalibur 15. And uh, you've heard this in the previous videos. If you haven't, please do check them. The, the last couple are in the links in the description below. And I'm really pleased with how this came out. I wanted to uh, show one thing in comparison to the AC30, uh, the 65 AC30 restoration part four, which is right before this on the channel, where I mentioned in that, that uh, the uh, Vox normal channel is darker than my normal channel, or rather I should say, I intentionally made my normal channel a little bit brighter than the Vox, and that was because I find the Vox too dark until you turn it up to about two o'clock. And I wanted this to be a little more uh, usable for more situations. So here is with the uh, color knob at about one o'clock. Very nice balanced sound. This is a uh, neck, uh, sorry, bridge middle on a strat. I turn the color all the way up to the brightest. So if it's in the middle, it's very balanced. You can turn it up, it gets brighter, but it's not top boost bright. It's not even a uh, bright cap on a fender bright, certainly. It just doesn't have that blanket over the speaker's effect that the Vox channel does. That said, so that hum is when I lean close to the transformer with the pickups on the guitar. That said, if you want to sound more like the Vox, turn the color down to about 9 o'clock. And uh, here's bridge on a strap. Bridge middle. So that um, you can get the sound of the 65 AC30 normal channel on this. You, you're just not limited to that because that would be the sound of the. AC30's normal channel with its cut circuit all the way off, so with no high end attenuation at all. I made this amp brighter when, when desired on purpose. So I'm very pleased with that. I'm going to stop playing now because you've, you've heard this. Uh, one thing I will show while I put this guitar away is also in comparison to that 64, sorry, 65 AC30 video, the self noise of the dimed normal channel and, and their amp is much louder. And I've got the master volume on 10 here. Now you hear that weird computer kind of sound? I don't know whether that's because my laptop is radiating a field or whether it's our home security system that wasn't there the other day and it has not been there in any of the playing uh, setups in the other room. I'm not too concerned about that as an environmental, but that is also showing you the, the noise floor of everything and it's dramatically lower than in the, uh, in the Vox and the uh, UF86 is picking up that same stuff. With that, EF86 is dimed, and the master is dimed, and if you refer to the playing videos, you would know how loud and how much gain that is. So, all right, let's talk about this layout versus subsequent ones. Um, as I mentioned in the previous videos, which you may or may not have seen, if you haven't seen them, go back and watch all my videos. They're rather splendid. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, this first one was done when I had the wrong, I did the board first, I had the wrong chassis dimensions and I thought V3 was going to be here and V2 was going to be here. Now that I have the accurate chassis dimensions for these, subsequent boards are going to have all the V2 stuff centered on the line of V2 and same for the V3, the phase inverter stuff. It's, so all this gets moved over. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with this prototype. This is still very short runs, but the wire lengths will be even shorter on the subsequent ones. These green and black wires going from the volume pots to the phase inverter input here on future builds, uh, they will be the same twisted wires that you see here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these. Uh, I did these first, 
but since I decided to go to the twisted wire rather than the shielded wire, uh, because it makes no difference electronically, and this is more cost effective in terms of getting the amp at a reasonable price point. Once I sit down and I use my drill bit and uh, my drill rather and, and put together 10 feet of this twisted wire, I'm just going to use it for all these things. It'll be easier to do, save uh, production costs and time, which are the same thing. Uh, this prototype uses artificial uh, has an artificial center tap on the heaters reference to the uh, output tube cathode, which is at about 10 volts DC. On the subsequent ones, I'm creating a 50 volt DC node on the board just for that heater reference. This amp is very quiet as far as heater noise goes. Subsequent amps will be even uh, quieter. Uh, two resistors and a capacitor. I had the real estate. It was a no-brainer. Uh, subsequent amps will also have solid state rectification that will emulate the uh, uh, voltage drop and the quote sag of the EZ81 rectifier tube. So subsequent amps will have a solid state rectifier which will behave and sound exactly like an EZ81 um, rectifier tube uh, without the heat and um, common failure associated with an EZ81 rectifier tube. That said, if you want the tube, that will be available at, at a modest upcharge. I do strongly recommend the version with solid state. Uh, it costs less, uh, it, both initially and in the long run. It's one less thing to go wrong. The sound is going to be great. I will demonstrate that when I build one, and you'll you'll hear it. But uh, uh, if you want the tube, you can get the tube. That's not an issue. Um, this one's got a master volume, which behaves very, very well, and is very natural sounding, even with gain, until about 10 o'clock, and then you begin to have uh, less gain as, as the output tubes are driven less hard. I was looking around <coughs> at amps on the market with overall similar features, and I noticed one company who makes terrible amps, but has amps with similar features to this, if you just look at it on paper, offers uh, a variable output wattage. And I've got that same circuit. I've been doing it for years on amps, and I can include it on this. The reason I initially was not going to was because I don't know uh, what where the amps are going. I don't have a, 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 a system of authorized repair centers, et cetera, et cetera. And any time you introduce heat, which is what any variable voltage or power scaling introduces into the into the mix, you have the potential for failure. Even if I design everything perfectly, which I try to do, one out of a hundred MOSFETs might just decide to die, even though the operating conditions are well within the spec that they're designed to operate at. And I don't want someone in uh, <coughs> Alabama or France, for that matter, to have a problem with a, a MOSFET and they take it to the local tech who's never seen anything like that before. And they say, that don't look like a fender, I better rip that out. Now, that's obviously the, the French guy, not the Alabama guy. But, uh, you know, so for those who don't expect to ever use the attenuation, or for those who don't live near a very good tech, I would suggest the master volume version. But I think I'm going to offer the version with variable voltage at probably the same or very slightly more, very slightly higher price point. I'm going to iron that out over the coming days. <clears throat> the variable voltage is unlikely to fail, but it is a potential thing. And it, the thing in it that is most likely to fail is a $4 MOSFET, which I'd be glad to send replacements out. And it's easy to change out should it be needed. It's just the kind of thing you want a good tech doing that. You don't want to be the guy in the back of the local guitar center, typically. Now, I'm sure there's some really good techs in the backs of guitar center. I have not met them. But anyway, that's a consideration pro and con on offering variable voltage versus the master volume. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, you know, maybe I'll introduce this as, hey, it's this, this much with master volume, this much with variable voltage, and see which ones people order, and then I'll make decisions. But the price difference between them is almost negligible. <clears throat> Installing variable voltage in an existing app, particularly one with a PCB, can be very problematic. 
but I have control over all this and I have already built into these boards, or at least I have built into the subsequent versions of these boards, the ability to, to accept variable voltage without any mods. It's really about $15 worth of parts in addition to this. That doesn't really affect the price of the amp that much. Um, uh, three versions of this amp will be offered. And all this will be repeated with more detail when I do the actual pricing. But this is the EFN version. It has the EF86 channel and the normal channel. There will also be the EFTB, which has the EF86 channel and the top boost channel. And it will be the NTB, which will have the normal and the top boost. Now, the EF86 channel sounds great. Uh, that said, it can be very microphonic in a combo. This, head, this will be available as a head and a combo. If you want the EF86, I strongly, strongly recommend going with the head version. But this amp will be available in a 1x12 combo or the head. And uh, I can also uh, have cabs made to match the head. So if, if you already have a, a whole bunch of cabinets and you want to get one of these, just get the head. That's cool. But if you want the whole new rig and you want it like a 2x12 and a head, I can get a 2x12 which will match the dimensions and cosmetics of the, of the head. Uh, that'll all be dealt with when we do the pricing uh, announcements. So the initial prices will just be for the head and the 1x12 combo with three different speaker options. We'll get to that later. But if people want uh, extension cabinets that match, um, this is small enough scale that if you order the head, we'll, we'll, we'll talk at that point. And uh, it's not one of those things where you buy a 1x12 and it has a company's logo on it so therefore it becomes a $700 cabinet I think that's insane so there's no big markup for me to put my logo on anything uh, I try to pass on <coughs> my savings wherever possible the stuff where I have I have labor involved it goes up the combo the the, uh, the, the cabinet the, the the head aside from installing speakers or putting my logo on it there's no labor in, in, really for, in that for me, so I don't pass that on. I don't do a big markup on that stuff. Anyway, I've talked enough. I'm really looking forward to uh, finalizing the prices in, over the next couple of days. Let me know if you have any questions about that that you'd like addressed in the, in the next videos on this. I know a lot of people are, are interested in this. Um, I will say that the price for the head is going to be between 2000 and, and 2500 and the combo is going to be about 150 more than that for the bass speaker and about 300 more than that for the one with the Celestian Blue. So this is not going to be an outrageously expensive amplifier, neither is it a cheap amplifier, uh, but I think it will be a fantastic one for years and years and years to come.